Well, good morning. Good morning. It's 9 30 or yeah, or so. And this is Real Talk with Devin Will. It is we're back on Facebook Live because I I had to reboot my I had to reboot my phone from last week. I actually turned it off and turned it back on. Which I never do, by the way. You should. It's always on. Don't call me that. I let mine die sometimes. Yeah. No. And and reboot it. Not done that. In a you long time. told me that. It's the truth because it makes batteries last longer. You told me to do that. And, and it's I'm true. following your directions and yeah. you don't even And I'm do not it. doing it anymore, so. Uh, See, I listen. Well, anyway. <laughs> hey, hey, Tessa. <laughs> but I'm boom. <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to see you. Um, <laughs> Tessa Fulton is, 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 is a mom of, one of, my, of one, some of my former students. And um, saw her a couple weeks ago at Newsom when I was there. And. I, as I remember, I think we I saw you at the Bush Garden. So, hey, th- thanks, Hello. thanks, Good thanks morning. for thanks for popping in. Uh, we appreciate that. All right, um, this particular subject this morning is I think is, is a really really important subject, and, I, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because one one of the things people talk about all the time in, in relationship in relationship is communication, mm-hmm. and I think that people think that communication is talking. And that's all of communication, being able to talk and being able to express. I'm sorry, what you say? Exactly, <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. Being able to express what you what you want, being able to communicate to your partner, or being able to communicate to the person the person in a relationship. But I think that we forget that half of communication is not talking. Yes. Half communication is. It's listening. listening. And I think it in our relationship the the we communicate, talk to each other, but I I know I don't listen properly. I'm gonna be honest. I don't. Because <laughs> I get it all the time from I'll, him. I'll be right back. I get it all the time and I know I don't. Where's my coffee? <laughs> that I don't can somebody, um, can somebody bring my coffee, please. I don't Listen, can't hire properly. staff for me. And that's why when I heard this topic on a, a particular Christian radio station, I, I thought, you know, that is really good. <laughs> Sorry, it was the Lord speaking to me. That's my Eddie Murphy laugh. Um, yeah, that's that's really um, a big part of communication is actually listening. To the person that you're in a relationship with, um, and there, and, and I think there are a couple of methods that we use, and especially at, now, I, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to talk about this as if you are in some sort of conflict, um, or in, in, in any discussion where you're not just talking about grocery lists. You're not just talking about, um, you know, what's on TV. You know, benign stuff. I'm talking about. Stuff where there may be conflict, um, and, and people do this all the time. They do this, and it isn't just in marriage relationship. People do this all the time. Elizabeth. Even in in uh, your business relationship, relationship, friends relationship, all the time. If you are in discussion with someone, and you are maybe on on opposite sides of the microphone, you may think that as they're talking, what you're doing is that you're formulating your response. Mm-hmm. But you're not listening. But you're not listening to what they're saying. They could be agreeing with you. They could be giving you points. They could be saying, you know what? You're absolutely right in that. But you're so busy formulating your retort and your response that you've not heard a word they've said, really. You heard the, what you didn't hear was, yes, you're right. You didn't hear that at all. And that continues, and that just stirs the pot more and stirs the pot more. And especially if the other person does the very same thing. Listening is half of communication. Not just being able to express yourself, but being able to actually hear what your partner is actually saying. Mm-hmm. So, I wanted to ask you huh? a question. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say that? On a scale of 1 to 10. Oh, yeah. This is from the... <laughs> yeah, I see. I, 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 I read the thing that you sent me. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is my listening? I want to tell you exactly what... They, he told his spouse and his daughter, right? Daughter or son? Son. Said mm-hmm. in the article. It's five. 
And I'll tell you, some of the, because Debbie's already sort of admitted that, that sometimes that she is guilty of formulating the retort and the response while I'm talking. <laughs> and that's really, and, 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 and that's tough. And, and I know, and you see, I know that's happening. So after 32 years, you know, this is the, we've got on Facebook the anniversary of our, um, our renewal our vows today. So we did that two years ago mm-hmm. t- today. Our anniversary is actually on the 5th, so we did that, that, that sun, was it sun, was it Saturday? Saturday. It was Saturday, which actually was the 3rd, because Sunday, because the 5th would have been Monday or something. Somewhere in the week. Yeah. What up, Nelson? Um, Nelson. But um, I think that that's the, the, the devs get guilty of that, and that makes things tough. But I know it's happening. The problem is that I know it's happening. I know that she's doing it. Um, because I am an attention person, and I want, even though you're talking, just like now, <laughs> stop it. I want the attention, but that that I know where it's from. Being a little child, and I was the youngest in the household, and you don't when you're that you're little and young and everybody else is bigger and everything like that, you tend to want to get the attention of everybody and want to want the conversation to be about you. I was the only child. Every conversation was about me. <laughs> Every, any conversation was about me, so that, that, that that's the difference. But at least I, I, I know that's happening. And some of my training, and I've had some training in that, is because I taught for 15 years, and I learned that if you're not going to have conflict with eight, I mean, with eighth graders, who are scary and awful, um, and a lot of times you really had to listen to what they're saying, uh, because you, you would try to use your teacher muscle in solving your problem. And sometimes, if you just listen to what they were saying, the kids a lot of times will give teachers the answers if the teachers would shut up long enough to listen. Uh, and I teach privately, so I I teach saxophone, flute, clarinet privately. So it's really important that I listen to what my students are saying. That way, I can help them the best. So, kind of unfair, but I've got a lot. I got a lot of practice. A lot of practical, and it isn't practice like once a week. I mean, it's for me because I teach every day. It's every day over thirty plus years, and um, so I get to practice that. Um, and Deb doesn't really get to do that because she was, you know, she was queen for a long time, and you know, in, in her job. She would sit on her throne, pass out edicts, and her subjects would just mm-hmm. run. <laughs> I always have this, Miss Day. We're going to do it now. That's <laughs> not true. <laughs> Someone bring me tea. <laughs> I'll be <with> you now. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, baby. No one ever did that for me. Ever. Even now. And, and that's something that I think God is working on on me with to uh, to be to be a listener to what people are saying and 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 pay attention. But in all all our rights, and and this is bad to say, a lot of times I'm right. And that's true. However, <laughs> being right. Isn't the main, and, I, and, and this is going to sound just as weird. Being right isn't always the main thing, mm-hmm. and it's we, not. And we have to teach guys, and we have to teach guys this a lot of times. Being right is not always the main thing. Winning, winning the discussion or winning the it's argument not always good. is not always. It's not the main thing. What up, Mark? Um, Especially if you're going to hurt somebody in the process, or you know, or it's going to damage your relationship with that person. It's not worth being right. No, I mean the idea. The idea is not. A, it's not that was to, a hard lesson for me. It's not. To, I, the idea is is not being right. The idea is, are you moving forward in the relationship? That is a relationship getting better. That's the goal. What's the end game of the conversation? What's the end game of the discussion? What's the end game of all of it? If the end game is just being right, well then, and crushing and crushing your 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 spouse or crushing the person you're in a relationship with. It's not really that, you know, I don't know if that's the best thing. But if the end game is, is growing 
and I think that in a relationship, especially in a marriage relationship, the end game should always be growth. It always, always should be, do you know something about your spouse that you didn't know before? Um, maybe they've changed about whatever you're talking about, or maybe they have an opinion that you didn't know before, or they have a, a viewpoint or a perspective that you didn't know before, um, or that they, have, that they have now. Did you grow in that? Are you, is your relationship growing? Is it, is it getting better? And that should always be the end game of every conversation, every discussion. Many people know what I mean, discussion, right? Uh <laughs> Intense. <laughs> and conversations. conversations. <laughs> uh, you know. Well, sometimes yes, it's, it's called sometimes compromise. it's called compromise, but sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes it's just listening. Sometimes it's just decide. And you know, the idea is, and Nelson, you guys have been married long. You know, and Nelson, it was in Longer our chat room. He's been he and and, and his wife have been married longer than we have. Um, that what you learn is that sometimes you just back down because. Whatever you're right about isn't more important in the relationship. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there alone and right. And right. But I was right. <laughs> you, you, but you and are you, alone. And you, you don't have anybody ate to... Ate your turkey by yourself this, this past week. <laughs> or you had to go over to... to, to, to Auntie's house. You went over to your and, mama's house and, and, had and <laughs> suffer with Uncle Uncle Jake. Drunk, you know, drunk Uncle Jake. Because she you don't have turkey. a family. Because you were right all the time. You were right. Uh, so being right is completely entirely overrated, um, especially if you're going to be in relationship with somebody long term. Um, that's really. You know, and I, and I think that that can't be your that can't be your end game. That can't be the goal. The goal can't be that I was right, but I'm right. Okay. But did you respect? Uh, did you show love to the person that you were in this discussion with? Are you both better because at the, the end of it than you were when you started? And if you're not, then that falls on both people. Because the because that that's got to be the end game. The end game is after the discussion, after the conversation, after whatever you're calling it. Are you better now than you were before? Do you know more now than you did before? And if you didn't, that kind of falls on both people sometimes. Because what is the purpose of communication? To do you to say you want to communicate? To communicate? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> so if you say, well, we're going to sit down and have this conversation, and then it ends up not being a, a coming out with any results, then what was the purpose? And I think that, you know what, I don't know, and I'm going to be completely and totally sexist here and misogynistic for just a second. I think that a lot of times women will say, we need to talk. Translation, I want to yell at you. If you want, if you're ready to talk, then you have to be ready to listen. Oh, I know, Ouch. I know. I just went from preaching to meddling. I know. Sorry, not sorry, but no, but seriously, if, if if you're going to approach your spouse and you're going to say we need to talk, then you need to be ready to listen. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is that you don't get, you don't just get to yell at somebody and then call it a conversation and then call it communication just because you yelled at them and you, and you ex. I want. I need to express my point. I need to let you know how I felt. Neck, 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 neck. Stop. And then, and then be and be surprised all the hell when your husband sit, is sitting in the chair like an eight year old boy being scolded like this. Well, aren't you going to say something? No, I'm all right. Are you surprised all the hell? And that just makes you even better <laughs> when they won't talk, when they won't talk back. Well, you just beat you. And you're not going to listen you anyway. Just took, you just took your belt out and you just beat him. He ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> you better. Because <laughs> now, now your spouse just wants out of the situation and will do anything to be away from that and to avoid that in the future. So again, if you say, if you, ladies, let me help y'all. If you say we need to talk, 
then you got to be ready to listen. You got to be ready to take whatever comes back. Yeah, you go take care of Aaron. <laughs> yeah, I got something to do. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to the Home Depot and Lowe's and Walmart. And there's a Scotty's, I think, still open in, in Seattle. <laughs> they only have this thing. There's one Scotty's. So I'll be back in two, three days. Yeah, you know, so so that's the deal. So, so that's the deal. Whenever you say, again, we need to talk. You, be ready to take it. You have to be ready to listen. Be ready to take because, it. Because they're going to give back. Because a lot of times the listening solves the problem if indeed you want the problem solved. Yes. And, and ladies, a lot of times we really don't want it solved. We just want to get what we got to say off our chest and just be done with it. And it, and then then he has all this stuff. To walk around with. I was used as a garbage can with a hairy lid. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes that's our that's our spot. I mean, that, that's our spot. That's our position to take that off our wife, you know, when she, when she does. But I'm telling you, a constant diet of garbage will kill you. A constant diet of garbage will kill your relationship. So if there's something between you two that uh, that you're struggling with, um, be sure that when when you have these moments, that the end goal is not just to spew. The end goal is to grow. To make things better. So do you want to know where I rate you? I'm a four. Only because you start your conversations from way over there. You can't the hear other, me. On the other side. I was not going to say that. On, our, on the other side of our of this estate here that you only see a little bit of. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm ready. Yeah, I would say you're like a seven and a half. Seven and a half. Eight. Hmm? Eight. Only because I, only because I practice. I practice all day. I practice all, almost every day. Um, even my part-time job in customer service, I learned that a lot of times if I just listen to what they say, then I can help them. Even if they're even if I even if I think in my brain these people are stupid, because <laughs> sometimes you're like, oh my yeah, sometimes goodness. You, when you work in customer service and you, it's like your brain's rattled. <laughs> How'd you drive here? Are you driving home <laughs> awfully early in the morning to be drinking? You know, I mean, all these things go through your head. But if you listen to what they're saying, a lot of times you can you can get them away from your window a lot faster <laughs> if you can if you can listen to what they're saying. And sometimes all they want is to just spew what they have to say, and then if you can resolve it, all the greater. Or make it better. Yes, or make it better. But sometimes even customers, you know, when you have customers, uh, you're helping. You sometimes they just want to rattle off, and there's nothing, and and there's nothing you can do to make it better, because they're not interested in making it better. And I think it's, and I think it's a, it's a habit that, that people get into. They're not interested in in it, in it being better, um, because no matter what you see, you know, you, and if, if you if you and those of you who worked um, in the public sector uh, know that you've tried everything. You you've given them every option. You ask them directly, "What would you like me to do?" And then and then they're not happy. Mm -hmm. So, um, so people people practice that too, and that's hard to deal with. And and you got, I think you have to avoid that in in your relationship. Um, if you are ready to discuss something, be ready to listen. Be ready to do your work. And I think listening is I, mean, I think listening is work. <clears throat> really listening to what people are saying. And take and, you know and and taking some of it to heart and deal and dealing with what they're saying is part of the work of of, of, of marriage. When we all when we all say and it's sort of a um, a cliche that you know that marriage is hard. Um, I think that that's part of the work. And if you're not used to doing that, that can be difficult. Mm -hmm. If you're a, a person who's used to telling, telling people what to do, where to go, and and I was thinking the other day when we were when I was preparing for this about how. I I don't even like to talk on the phone, listen on the phone. I'm bad, people. I, I, I that's why I don't don't 
call people, you'll never usually get phone calls from me. And I'm sorry, family and friends. Because she doesn't want to hear what you're saying. Because I don't like... I, don't, <laughs> I like listening to you because you just rattle on about that's nothing. That's terrible, but no, then I'm not saying you all rattle about nothing. I'm not saying that. But it's just something in my personality, and I'm truly working on Bring that. me tea. I'm truly working on that. It's something that God's working on me because he revealed a lot of stuff in this, when I was looking over this assignment, you know, what what's talking, and I realized some things about myself. It's like, that's your problem, Debbie. You got to work on that. You and the Lord got to work on that because I... I, I realize I don't call people. I don't. It's it's bad. I don't like listening. <laughs> listening listening is actually more work than talking. Mm -hmm. As somebody who makes their living talking, I can tell you, listening is a lot hard. Listening is a lot harder than talking. It is. Um, because you have to put first of all, you have to put self away for a second, and then as they're listening and as you're actively listening. Not thinking about what you're going to say, exactly. but actively listening to what that person is saying and, and, and how you can support them in what they are saying. It ain't about you, Debbie. It's, it, you know, when, when you're actively listening, it's not about you. It's about, it's, it's about stopping you for just long enough to hear what they're actually saying. Um, and in, 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 in a, in a um, marriage relationship or in a romantic relationship, um, part of part of what they're saying is maybe actually how they're feeling too. So if they're expressing that, if you're open enough to express that, and that's and and you, and you should be, uh, it is incumbent upon the person who's listening to really take it in, and 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 sort of experience it as they're saying it, because that's gonna that's gonna make you closer. That's going to build that connection that build you're looking your relationship. for. Relationship. That's going to build that, you know what? And you can look for nonverbal cues, and and, and 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 we'll do and we'll do programs on nonverbal cues in the in the, in, the, in the year to come, and all that because all those things are important in communications as, as well. But the first one is the stuff that comes out of your face. Are they list? Are are you listening to what they're actually saying? Are you getting offended because what they what they seem to be saying may put you in a bad light? Because that that's part of that's part of people's problem too. I mean, that isn't necessarily part of Debbie's problem, but but are, what they're saying, do you feel that that's putting you in a bad light? So there's a lot going on there. So it's really really important that you learn to listen, actively listen. Um, you know the the joke, and we were watching a movie last night, a Christmas movie, where the wife is talking and the husband is reading the newspaper, and he's just going, uh huh. Yep, you yeah you are right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that's kind of the joke uh, of the husband not listening to the wife, and um, you know and as and you know it wasn't a Hallmark movie, but it was you know it was black version of Hallmark movies. Yeah. Um, it, you know what? It, it, it nearly cost him really. It nearly cost him his relationship at, at at a point in his life where he needed this relationship more than he needed anything else. Um, he needed a relationship with his wife more than he needed anything else. Uh, so the idea was that that he had not listened. He had been he had been there. He had been in the room. He had been he had voted present, but he was never present. He pre was never in. He the was never present. He had voted present, but he was never present. Um, so when you're in, in in these discussions and when you get the opportunity to listen, I think it's not only incumbent upon you to do to do that. I think it's beneficial for you to do that, to actively listen, because that's how you grow. You won't grow any other way. The only way I got through school was my ability to listen. Well, because my handwriting is so horrific. He can't take horrific. notes. Horrific. I can't take notes. I can't, I can't write down what I thought you were saying and then listen to I can't. Yeah, he, he cheats in church by looking at my notes. Well, what I, did he say? And I listen, and, 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 and what will happen is, and, and when you meet me, it'll be weird when you talk to me because I am listening to you intently. Uh, not creepy. I mean, it's, for some people, it's creepy, but I am listening to what you're saying intently. I'm hearing what you're saying, and I can remember what you said. Hey, Tom. Um, and Everett, hey, how, how y'all doing? Thanks for popping in. 
But, 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 but the idea is that, that, you know what, listening is super, super important. Actively listening mm -hmm. is super important. And it, and it probably is what has saved our marriage all through the years because he listens. And he's an attentive to what he listens to. He does, you know, what, whatever is going on or whatever, he, he listens. I try to listen because if Debbie's saying it to me, it's important. It's important. And I, and I, you know what, and I may need to know, it may not be important right now, right at this, at this very minute, but it's important to her, so I'll, I'll, what are you saying? What do you want me to know? What, what, what do you think I need to know? So, and that's... And sometimes I'm just rattling. And sometimes I'm just rattling on, but that's okay too. You know, like my friend Ralph said, eat, eat the chicken, throw away the bone. <laughs> get the, get the important stuff out, uh. But that's that. That's really super important, and especially you know what. And and, and if you're married, you guys have had, had ongoing conversations. I'm not talking about arguments, but ongoing conversations where where you talk about this thing that happened at work on Monday, and then and 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 Debbie has this this habit of just slipping in on Thursday afternoon, as if we've been talking about this conversation all week when we haven't talked about it in days. And she just wants to finish it all in the conversation. Had I not been paying attention the first time, I'd have no idea what she was talking about. It would seem completely random, like, oh, and sometimes it is. Sometimes it catches me off guard, but I remember that we had we talked about this Monday, and now she's finishing the conversation, or something happened in the situation, and now we're getting to the next part of the deal. And it's only because I've learned to listen to what she's saying, even in the benign stuff. Yes, we're talking about the yes, the importance that's really, really you know uh, you have to do. But even the, in the benign stuff, the, you know, the everyday, oh, this happened to work, and this happened to so and so, or when I was driving home, I saw this. You know, even in the benign stuff, it doesn't seem to matter. Let me tell you, everything's an opportunity to practice. And let me tell you something else, everything matters. That's why the, that's why this can be hard. Yes, it is hard. That's why it can be hard because everything matters. Everything, everything, all day, everything. All right, um, we, we're, we're past the twenty-five minute point. So, um, are, 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 are you going to work today, or are you just going to hang out here? I am going to work. Oh, today. okay. Well, that's fine. It's cool. I think my boss would want me there. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, sure, sure. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he'd be, he, he, he has to have you there, or that place doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Love y'all, but y'all know. We said he got to be in the place. All right. Um, Again, this is, we are coming up on two years. MLK Day in January will be two years, correct? Yeah, it will. Well, that's a lot. So listen, if you're getting value out of this, do us a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Real Talk with Deb and Will. That would be awesome. Um, and um, again, like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Share with people who you think are struggling. Share with your spouse. Share with your pastor. Share with whomever you think will get benefit. If we've been providing value, please subscribe and share. We appreciate that greatly. <clears throat> if you have questions, comments, write them down in the comments section there. Um, things that you want us to discuss things that you have going on in your life or you starting a marriage, starting a relationship, starting anything and you think that we may be able to help, we'd be happy to help. You know what? Because 30 in a couple of days. Yeah. On the 5th. 5th, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> that was a Broman reference. Y'all get that, right? Uh, but um, it'll be 32 years. Actually, we've been together more than thirty-two well, years. Well, probably. well, you know, mostly. You know, most people just don't meet on, on on a bus and then go get married and just start the relationship from there. <laughs> Some people do, and that doesn't work. You know, people who, 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 who met on the bus and got married. No. But just about right. Some people just about. So yeah, we, we yeah we yeah we we dated before we got married. We didn't just get married. <laughs> we didn't get married. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Love the way you look in them Pizza Hut pants. You should marry me. Let's <laughs> That's go. That's what he was thinking. Let's go. 
That's what he was thinking. Yeah, but I looked pretty good in my pizza pants back in the day, too. Yes, he did. I was adorable. Uh, I was skinny, and I was adorable. But in any case, I have hair. This is about as long as it'll grow now. This is it. This is bushy. This is it. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, we got to get out of here. Um, we got stuff to do. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sake, take care of yes, yourself. Yes, enjoy your Monday. Be thankful for Monday. Monday's a good day. Any Monday you get. You get to get, start all over. Yeah. No matter what you jacked up, you get to <laughs> you get to try it again. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Wouldn't it be awful if, you, if, if your last week was so terrible that you didn't get to do it again? You don't want that either. All right, so we got to get out of here. And remember this. We love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. We'll see you when you see you. Peace.